Good morning, people of God. Listen, I want to touch back on the book of 1 Samuel, right? Um, the spirit of Saul. Uh, the other day I read up until um, I read chapter 18, verse up until um, chapter 18, up until verse 16, right? So I want to continue on at verse 17 and um i want to read and go to um up until verse 20 right so i want to read here how saul continued in his um pursuit after david and what came to my spirit is to expound on the fact of how spirits they travel in packs right that's why it is written um when an evil spirit is cast out of a man he goes and roams looking for another place and then he comes back to his old place and if that place is not clean and swept um basically changed renewed he comes back with seven stronger spirits spirits travel in packs people of god um so I want you to be cognizant of that. And when um, folk soul have been open to an evil spirit, it may start off with something small, such as simple as, um, well, let's look at Saul case, for example. Prior to David, prior to him losing his anointing, um, he rebelled. He was in rebellion, you know. Um, he seemed sorry. He seemed remorseful, but the mouth can say one thing. You know, actions speak louder than words. Um, so as God anointed David and he saw the favor on David, then the envy, then the jealousy, then the manipulation. You see, manipulation is just that of witchcraft, playing games with the mind. That is the most simplest form, right? So he didn't humble himself and, um, and just allow God to do what God was going to do. He didn't let God be God. Um, that evil spirit kept tormenting him and God had David there who was anointed to take Saul's place. David even had to play the harp for him. He felt better, you know, so he knew he kept seeing the favor of God with David, but he continuously, because we have free will, right? So he continuously to allow these spirits to use him to try and kill David and set David up, right? And then when he would, he just kept getting more aggressive and more aggressive in his tactics. But in the end, I mean, you know, he loses eventually. But David had such a pure heart. He loved Saul. He loved Saul so much. How many of you love the folk who you know they've been doing some evil, malicious things against you? Right, and the plan of the enemy is to get us offended, so we turn our hearts turn like the hearts of those he's already captured, like the hearts of some of those who have made themselves enemies to us, you know, but when you stay strong and you stay pure and you stay in love, even with imperfections, even if you snap and mess up or you know what I'm saying or or chew somebody out, rightfully so. <laughs> or use some choice words. At the end of the day, that heart is all that's pleasing to God. And when it stays pure, the enemy don't like that. Right? And we cannot use the enemy's tactics and crafts to fight off evil. You can't fight evil with evil. You can't defeat craft, witchcraft with crafts. <laughs> Satan can't cast out Satan. You can't serve two gods. Isn't it? It's written. You can't serve two gods. You'll love one and hate the other. So you got to be all into the left or all into the right. You see, it's when you straddle between them two, you, be, you, you open your spirit to us. You open your soul to spirits of confusion. And we know God is not the author of confusion, right? So when confusion comes in, what I just said earlier, spirits, they travel in packs. So you might feel bold and victorious sometimes, but then you find yourself being tormented by evil, right? 
having dreamed, becoming in covenant with familiar spirits. Why? Because you open your soul to these things. Folk will do all types of things to, and I'm going off here a little bit, but I'm going to keep flowing in the spirit. Folk will turn to all sorts of things to lean on, lean on their own understanding. And some of them can have good and good hearts, but just being led away through ignorance, being dummies. You know, all of us have been ignorant at times, but folk will turn to so many different things and mediums, everything except God. And where does that leave God? Where does that leave his Ruach Kakadesh? For example, I have folk who I know have loved the Lord and gone on to be with the Father, right? They are our ancestors, those who've gone before us. If I call on their names and I trust in them to protect me and deliver me, where does that leave the spirit of Yah? Hmm? How can he get the glory? Do the ancestors have, are they more supreme than Elohim, the creator, the God of the universe? I'm using the name of God, but who is God? Who is your God? Hmm? Explain him. I'll tell you who my God is. He is the God that answers by fire. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God that sent his only begotten son, Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, the one and only Christ, to walk this earth with his Ruach, with his spirit, in the flesh. To be an example, to defeat the adversary, to be crucified so that his blood could have power and life. So that now there are things that I may find myself falling short of, but that blood, because it still lives, because it still has power, I can fall under the protection of it. And that is why the enemy tried to prevent him from making the ultimate sacrifice. (laughs) You remember when they were walking him to the cross, my savior, and they took the sponge and they put it in his mouth. Some scriptures say, um, what myrrh, some say, um, some substance or whatever, but listen, he spit it out. You know what my Ruach tells me? He, when he, when he tasted it, he spit it. You see, the enemy is very crafty. He didn't want him to get up on that cross and make that ultimate sacrifice. (laughs) He spit it out because he knew it was poison. He didn't swallow it. Even through pain, persecution, the Savior loved us so much. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him, shall have life everlasting and shall not perish. Do you believe in the son? Is he your savior? Who is he? Is he just a man that walked the earth to you? Then you can't fall under that covenant. You can't fall under protection. And the enemy knows that. See, Jesus spit out that, what they gave him. Because he was going to make that ultimate sacrifice. The enemy was very, very crafty. When I read and study these scriptures, it's the Ruach Kakadesh that gives revelation. That's why it is written we must study to show ourselves approved. There's nothing in this earth that can override the power of God. When Jehoshaphat was under attack, he didn't go and do any. Uh, he didn't. He didn't burn any crystals. He didn't. He didn't burn anything in his house. He didn't. He didn't rely on anything. All he did was believe what the prophet said. He was scared now, but see, in our weakness, it is written that God's strength is made perfect. The just shall live by faith. So, am I living by faith when I go and? purchase things and have to do all this other stuff to protect myself is that faith 
if his spirit of power is within me. Now faith would allow me to know that if he has given me the power and his power is in me by his words and his omissions, and I believe that, then I know that I am untouchable. I know that my words go out and they have power. And when I come into the knowledge of that, I must be careful with the way I use them, but I must also know that the power is in me to speak what I need to speak in order to defeat the adversary. So I will not call on the names of my ancestors because they are dead and gone and many of them made mistakes and even some died under curses. But I will call on the name of Yeshua. I will call on the angels and the spirits that I want to invite in my home. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. I will call on peace. I will call on wisdom as it is written in the scripture. She is our sister. Wisdom, I need more of you today. I invite you to go everywhere with me in the name of Yeshua. Power. I want to feel you magnified all in my mind and through my members. <laughs> Peace. Flow through me. Joy. You see? Out of the mouth comes life or death. Blessings or cursings. Those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So don't we have the power, his power within us to speak a thing and it shall be? If folk have the power to cast a spell on you and bewitch you through your mind, through the seeds that you allow to be sown in your ear, then don't you think you have the power to operate as Yah has said so? <laughs> but how can you use that power if you don't believe Oh, glory. Anyway, <laughs> you know, what's coming to my spirits now, I, I wrote down some things from the book of Enoch, Metatron. Um, This guy was saying some called Metatron Enoch, but as I studied the book of Enoch, Enoch confirmed his name. Is, he was also given the name Metatron. I wrote down the names of the angels. You see... I will not call on ancestors to protect me. I believe that is offensive to God. And not only that, who are they? What are their names? What do they do? But let me get this, what I wrote down from the books of Enoch and learning the angels of God. Remember when Daniel, remember when the angel um, in the book of Daniel and Daniel fasted for 21 days. And I know I'm going all off subject, but I'm going to flow in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Daniel fasted for 21 days and he was praying at first and then he started fasting. And when the angel finally came to him, he told him he was withstood by the prince of Persia. These evil entities, they have names. And he said, um, it was Michael who had to come and help him fight off the prince of Persia. You see? So I will call on Michael. But what is Michael's purpose? Stand by for a second. Let me get my notebook out. I wasn't intended to go here, so I don't have it. So I have to find where I put my notebook, where I wrote the angel's names down. I'll be right back. Give me a second. Okay, I am back. Um, so, again, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so I will not call on the names of my ancestors, but I will call on the names of the angels, right? And when Daniel, excuse me, when Daniel um, was um, fasting, when the angel reached him, he said he was withstood by the prince of Persia for 21 days, right? And Michael had to come and help him. Who is Michael? Michael is one of the archangels, right? He's one of God's most powerful. He is um, just as, uh, as God. He's one of God's most powerful angels, right? And he is the angel of righteousness. He is the angel of righteousness. So, now you know Michael, right? And the books that, remember, it was 
and I don't even, all this is coming to me now, and I don't even have it, but he told Daniel to seal the books. It will confuse, it will be confusion, right, to the time, the appointed time. And I believe it's in, I want to say Isaiah, but they talked about this, the, the, the books that were sealed. You see, that is why, people of God, this is why it's so important for us to study, right? And learn God's word. And a lot of these lost books, so-called lost, maybe they were withheld for such a time as this. Folk are seeking the truth now. Many folk are seeking God's truth. They're wanting to come back to God. They want to know God for real. They want to understand the mysteries of these, of the, of the physical, the spiritual things that they've seen, the supernatural things they've seen with their eyes. And they want the truth. They want the truth, not manipulation, not your lies. There's some folk that will lie to folk just to get money from them. Hold on a second. Let me see. So that was my alarm going off, but... As usual, I beat my alarm up. <laughs> I was already up for a few hours. It's uh, what time is it? It's four o'clock, but I was already up. So <clears throat> there's some folk. The love of money, the love of money, is the root of all evil. There's some folk who love money more than they love God's people. They love money and they love things. They don't care about your soul. They don't care about feeding you a lie. <laughs> but anyway, Raphael, right? That is another angel. He helps. He helps those of us, some folk who carry the gift of healing, right? Raphael is there the one that helps you when you're doing your ministries, when you're healing folks through your words, through your prayers, through your laying on of hands, right? Um, so Gabriel, Gabriel is the messenger of God, right? His name means God is my strength. Oh, glory. <laughs> God is my strength. Jophiel. Jophiel means the beauty of God, right? And he likes positivity. He promotes positivity. Ariel. Ariel is the lioness. The name means lioness of God, right? Azrael, Azrael, who um, oftentimes when I would <clears throat> describe one of his patients I used to have, but God allowed me to minister her. I was a CNA for many years and I accidentally forgot to renew my license online, which was a simple process. But because I forgot to renew it, I was not going back through the course to get it because, you know, but anyway, there was a patient that I had one time where the Lord allowed me to help her transition. And I would say, during this time, I was, I, I was, I was very m more ignorant. I, um, or should I say that word? I was not where I was in Christ now. It was, few, it was years ago. I was much younger. But there was always something on the inside of me where God would use me to help a lot of folk, particularly those who were... Um, at that time when I worked in my field in the nursing homes who were ill, right? And so this woman, God allowed me to minister to her and uh, my soul was just attached to her. You know, I was just drawn to her. Whenever I'm drawn to someone, I know that that's God. Sometimes I don't know the reason why, but I was able to minister to her and help her release some things because she had shut down. She wasn't talking. She didn't eat. And every, you know, some folk come to work and they just overlook folk. But I was there following my spirit day after day. Sometimes I would even get off and go back at night because some folk were in my spirit and I would just have to be there with them. But anyway, long story short, this lady was holding on to some pains and she had just shut down. And God revealed some things to me about her and I just would go and just begin to speak. 
And slowly and surely, I would see this woman come to life and she start eating for me. And the nurses, they would be surprised. They're like, she's eating, you know? And, um, you know, when I would talk to her before I go, she never really talked back, but I would make sure that she was clean. She was neat. And I would pray over her and put her in bed, treat her like my little baby. Um, and then she would wink at me sometimes before I left. And slowly but surely, this woman began to talk. She began to speak, right? And whatever she was holding on to, when she released it, that's when the angel, the death angel came and get her. So I said all that just to say, I would describe it as when I would tell the story, when the death angel was coming to get her and I saw her soul coming out of her body. You know, I saw when her soul was leaving the day that God came and took her and it was a beautiful thing. This was my first time seeing someone transition. And um, I, I knew that she was going to be with the Lord. But it was such a, like, the atmosphere. Like, I even felt like, I felt like I saw birds singing in there. And we were inside the nursing home. And I went to tell the charge nurse, she's, um, she's leaving. And that's when everyone came. But it was like, I felt the presence of an angel. And when her soul came out, um, I said, wow, the deaf angel came and got her. And I had any knowledge of the angels' names or none of that, but I always called it, described it as the deaf angel came and took her, and it was a beautiful thing. And so as I began to study the lost books, I and, and I learned the name. And a young lady also, my sister, she shared a video with me a while back where a guy broke down the names of the angels, which um, also confirmed a lot of what Enoch was saying, okay? So... When I learned the name of um, Azrael, the angel of death, who helps transition from death to life, you know, I was like, wow, now I can put a name behind the spirit that I always call the death angel. So anyway, I made a long story. I should have made it shorter. <laughs> but yeah, you know, and um, it's just a beautiful thing. God gets all the glory and his angels. He said, I've given the angels charge over you. He didn't say I gave your ancestors charge over you. He said, the angels, the angels have names. God is not a God of confusion. The enemy will make you think that there's secrets and things you need to know. No, Amos 3 and 7, he says, I do nothing of a mystery. See, when folk, I grew up, when we, many of us, we grew up and we heard folks say, God work in mysterious ways. And then we were repeated. Everything will be passed down. But as you study for yourself, it, a lot of spells are broken off of your mind. You know, they're, they're broken because nowhere in the word he says he does things of a mystery. Amos 3 and 7 says, surely the Lord doesn't do anything of a mystery except he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Now, if we don't have revelation because we are not God, right? We are disciples. His spirit lives in us. We belong to his kingdom. But we cannot match up to him so there's sometimes we have to pray and have a broken and contrite spirit and fast when we don't understand things not take the easy route out some folk take the easy route out they take the tarot cards you know they get involved with the ain't with different they, you know listen let me tell you something i want you to st study the fallen angels the nephilim the giants see they came down they wanted to defy God. God has enemies. And his enemies are our enemies. The adversary. The fall, There were fallen angels who went and stood with Satan. You see, those who oppose God, they came down and they taught the children certain secrets and mysteries. They wanted to embarrass God. Knowledge that wasn't supposed to be released to God's people because that would then make the people think that they could compete with God or they were little mini gods. You see folks saying, I'm a, I'm a God, you a God. You see, that's that fallen angel knowledge that doesn't continue. See, history repeats itself. History repeats itself. All of that to oppose God. And I think it was, who was it? Was it, a, was it Ezekiel that exposed Satan? Well, he said he would... That, he will be like the most high, you see, calling himself as God. When the economy receives a, de a, a, a deadly wound, 
He will heal the deadly wound, right? When when sudden destruction comes, when it see it's a lot in God's word, but you gotta study it for yourself. Satan don't like folk to get a good understanding of the book of Revelation. <laughs> but anyway, listen. A lot of the knowledge is knowledge outside of God's word that has been passed on by the Nephilim, the fallen angels. Yep. So whose work are we really doing? Are we doing the work of Yah? Or are we passing down on them secrets of what the fallen angels wanted to do to contaminate what God meant to go on in his body? Right? How can we truly rely on the spirit of Yah when we calling on other guides and other things, spirits, that have no name, ancestors, who don't have no power. The seventh angel is Chamiel, and he is one, um, the name means he who sees God. He brings peace to the world, right? And protects us from negative energies. Life is spiritual. So anyway, Metatron um, is what Enoch's name was, right? That's what Enoch even said that he confirmed it. So he is one of the angels that is closest to God. People of God, <clears throat> I don't know why the Lord had me go off on this because this is not what I came on here for. I came on here to go back into 1 Samuel. Um, but then I got on this and I continued to flow with the spirit. So this video is almost 30 minutes long. <laughs> I'm going to get off of here and I am going to go back into Samuel in another video. Um, I don't know what I'll title this video. Um, but yeah, I was obedient. I just flowed in the spirit, right? I didn't try to stop it. So whoever needs to hear this, the angels will put it where it needs to be placed. I love you. You are the light of the world. Don't let the enemy make your light grow dark. Keep shining bright. God is for you. If you watch this video, if you stuck in here and watch all this, oh, you got a pure heart. You got a pure heart. Mm -hmm. And the enemy ain't going to be able to confuse you because you're going to put the pieces together. You're going to get to the bottom of your father's will. You're going to be about your father's business. All right? And know that your little country bunkin sisters love you. Jesus, his blood is the only blood that has power. He didn't make that sacrifice for nothing. And not only that, what name is hated and there's so much controversy over the most? <laughs> is it Yeshua? <laughs> It's Jesus. It's Jesus. All right, people of God, have a blessed day. I'm going to come back on here for um, and finish what I was going to start in the book of Samuel. I love you.